Landsat 7 is the seventh satellite of the Landsat program. Launched on April 15, 1999, Landsat 7's primary goal is to refresh the global archive of satellite photos, providing up-to-date and cloud-free images. The Landsat program is managed and operated by the USGS, and data from Landsat 7 is collected and distributed by the USGS. The NASA World Wind Project allows 3D images from Landsat 7 and other sources to be freely navigated and viewed from any angle. The satellite's companion, Earth Observing 1, trailed by one minute and followed the same orbital characteristics, but in 2011 its fuel was depleted and O1's orbit began to degrade. Landsat 7 was built by Lockheed Martin Space Systems Company. In 2016, NASA announced plans to attempt the first ever refueling of a live satellite by refueling Landsat 7 in 2020. Topic: <laughs> Satellite specifications. Landsat 7 was designed to last for 5 years and has the capacity to collect and transmit up to 532 images per day. It is in a polar, sun-synchronous orbit, meaning it scans across the entire Earth's surface. With an altitude of 705 km plus or minus 5 km, it takes 232 orbits, or 16 days, to do so. The satellite weighs 1,973 kg, is 4.04 m long, and 2.74 m in diameter. Unlike its predecessors, Landsat 7 has a solid state memory of 378 gigabits, roughly 100 images. The main instrument on board Landsat 7 is the Enhanced Thematic Mapper Plus (ETM Plus). Topic: Main features. A panchromatic band with 15 meters 49 feet spatial resolution band 8 visible reflected light bands in the spectrum of blue green red near infrared near and mid infrared mirror with 30 meters 98 feet spatial resolution bands 1 to 5 7 a thermal infrared channel with 60 meters spatial resolution band 6 full aperture 5% absolute radiometric calibration Topic. Scan line corrector failure On May 31, 2003 the scan line corrector SLC in the ETM Plus instrument failed. The SLC consists of a pair of small mirrors that rotate about an axis in tandem with the motion of the main ETM Plus scan mirror. The purpose of the SLC is to compensate for the forward motion along track of the spacecraft so that the resulting scans are aligned parallel to each other. Without the effects of the SLC, the instrument images the Earth in a zigzag fashion, resulting in some areas that are imaged twice and others that are not imaged at all. The net effect is that approximately 22% of the data in a Landsat 7 scene is missing when acquired without a functional SLC. Following the SLC failure, an Anomaly Response Team ART was assembled, consisting of representatives from the USGS, NASA, and Hughes Santa Barbara Remote Sensing the manufacturer of the ETM Plus instrument. The team assembled a list of possible failure scenarios, most of which pointed at a mechanical problem with the SLC itself. Since there is no backup SLC, a mechanical failure would indicate that the problem was permanent. However, the team was unable to rule out the possibility of an electrical failure, though such a possibility was deemed remote. Nevertheless, on September 3, 2003, USGS Director Charles G. Grote authorized the Landsat project to reconfigure the ETM Plus instrument and various other subsystems on board Landsat 7 to use the spacecraft's redundant side B electrical harness. With this authorization, the USGS flight operations team at the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center uploaded a series of commands to the spacecraft, instructing it to operate using the redundant electrical harness. 
This operation was successful, and on September 5, 2003, the ETM Plus instrument was turned on and acquired data that was sent to the Landsat ground system at Eros outside Sioux Falls, South Dakota. It was immediately apparent that the migration to the side B electrical harness had not fixed the problem with the SLC. Following this, the instrument was reconfigured again to use its primary electrical harness. The subsequent conclusion of the art was that the SLC problem was mechanical and permanent in nature. Landsat 7 continues to acquire data in this mode. Data products are available with the missing data optionally filled in using other Landsat 7 data selected by the user. In 2013, Landsat 7 was joined by Landsat 8. Satellite imagery In August 1998, NASA contracted EarthSat to produce Landsat GeoCover GeoCover 2000 in NASA World Wind — a positionally accurate orthorectified Landsat thematic mapper and multispectral scanner imagery covering the majority of the Earth's land mass. The contract was part of the NASA Scientific Data Purchase which was administrated through NASA's John C. Stennis Space Center. GeoCover was later enhanced to EarthSat NaturalView, a simulated natural color Landsat 7-derived C, year 2000, orthorectified, mosaiced and color-balanced digital image dataset other commercial simulated true color 15 meter global imagery products built from the NASA Landsat 7 imagery include TerraColor from EarthStar Geographics, TrueArth found in Google Earth and Google Maps from TerraMetrics, BrightEarth from ComputerMaps, simulated natural color from Atlogus and a product of iCubed used in World Wind. Largest parts of the Earth's surface displayed on web mapping services like Google Maps, Google Earth, MSN Maps or Yahoo Maps are based on enhanced and color-balanced Landsat 7 imagery. See also Google Earth NASA World Wind Virtual Globe Uniform 1